All right, you are on the platform. We are going to get to events, the unfolding and very tragic events uh, in Israel, um, just a little later in the program. But first up this morning, I think it would be fair to say that if Winston Peters was charging rent for the space he currently occupies in the head's of many other political parties in this country, he would be a very wealthy man. A surprise move over the weekend in which Christopher Luxon raised the spectre of a second election. Should Parliament be effectively hung because uh, he and Act Together, National and Act Together, couldn't cut a deal, and the polls look like this, with Winston Peters, who, lo and behold sits in the centre of New Zealand politics holding the balance of power. But this is at variance with Luxon's previous comments. Um, prior to, one might add, the polls opening, uh, his previous comments being that he would pick up the phone and he would talk to Winston Peters. Uh, so what is this all about? And what does the man who has uh, yet again made a comeback but as it would seem to me um, causing huge conniptions in other parties, what does he make of Luxon's change of, of heart? We are joined now uh, on video link by uh, Winston Peters, leader of New Zealand First. Mr Peters, thank you for joining us. Um, what do you think Luxon is up to? Look, when I first read that, I thought it had to be a mistake. Somebody hadn't said, had said something and got it wrong. But I never thought that they would double down and have Seymour join him as well in this tantrum that it shows an enormous inexperience. And then to have an advertisement that it belies the real situation, which was the last time we negotiated it took 11 days, not two months or eight weeks. And the economy never stops anyway. The reality is, in some cases, the economy is grateful that there's nobody interfering with it. And I'm sure you can, your listeners and readers can understand that and viewers can understand that. But really... It's really um, extraordinary inexperience here when people make those sorts of statements. And, you know, half a million people have already voted. So how dare we threaten people who have already voted that the process that they've been through may be a waste of time? Because it's not true. It's totally false. But it demonstrates one thing. They are so scared of their polls, and these internal polls are showing New Zealand's support much stronger than they think. That's our information. Mm. And that's why they're flat out panicking. And it's no time to be losing your head. Mm. And it's just no time to, to demonstrate publicly that you don't understand the process. Mm. The other thing uh, I, I have seen commented on, and, and I'll be honest, I haven't checked the statutes on this, or the convention, but should a parliament be hung or no new government emerge, it is in fact the incumbent prime minister, that would be Chris Hipkins, that would make that decision because he is the caretaker prime minister and it actually no. needs a majority, I understand, needs a majority of, of parliament or elected MPs to make that decision? No, the process constitutionally, you've got it about right accepting. The, the person in the Prime Minister's situation or any situation has to go to the Governor General and say, I'm asking you to d declare us the new government because we have got proof of the numbers. The Governor General simply has to find out whether that's true. So it would not be, as you say, excepting in this case, how on earth could National Act be panicking like this when this is a government that's the worst I've seen in a total mess for the last three years? They've demonstrated what happens to them when they've got no experience or handbrake around them. How on earth could they be so panicking if they were focused on their job? It sort of reminds you of the five sp stages of grief. You know what they are, don't you? It's, first of all, you have denial, you have the anger, then you have bargaining, then you have depression, and then you have a thing called acceptance. Well, get over it now because we're going to have to get on and form a much better government than this one. All right. Look, I want to move on. You do have experience, as you said, and you have experience as Foreign Minister of New Zealand, which is a senior cabinet portfolio, an important one. And we have had an international event unfold in the last, what, 36 hours in Israel of deep concern. Some have compared it to being Israel's 9-11 moment or a 9-11 moment. Uh, our government initially responded with Nanaya Mahuta issuing, I thought, an ambiguous statement, which some six hours later was superseded by a far more clear statement of condemnation of the terrorist attacks uh, by Prime Minister Chris Hipkins. We also have a Labour Party which wishes 
to extend ambassador status to the Palestinian representative in Canberra and issue credentials. Speaking from the perspective of your experience of a foreign minister, how does New Zealand, or how traditionally does New Zealand position itself in these situations? And how should it? Well, look, first of all, the difference between Nanaima, who was the comment, and the Prime Minister's comment was like chalk and cheese. At least the Prime Minister got on to it. He realised this is a full-scale declaration of war and that there were terrorist groups involved as well. I mean, this is just uh, not difficult to analyse. And our position has always been to be a two-state country where they'll, in time, have to live together, the Palestinians and the Israelis. Now, that is a position we've had for a long, long time. But in this case here, it's a full-on war. They won't, they won't win it. But already a thousand people have lost their lives. And um, again, it was a, an attack in the most repulsive way, a full-on attack during a Jewish holiday and beginning with a place where people were all assembling. A whole lot of innocent people were there. So it's a shocker. And uh, we have got to make it very, very clear that um, the um, people who perpetuate this war uh, are going to have to be held to account when we find out who they are. Mm. Well, would it have been acceptable? What would you have thought as foreign minister if uh, a prime minister had overruled what you said? Is that a, is that a slap on the wrist for Nanaima Hudo or does it show that she's out of step? Well, you know, the first process is that the foreign minister will be telling the prime minister what the right words are because you're meant to be the person with a department that's expert in this matter. Mm. That's how it's meant to work. Not with the Prime Minister knows a whole lot more than you do. Yeah. 